reading through the Bible in a year, August 7th, Judges 21, Acts 25, Jeremiah 35, and Psalms 7 through 8. Now the men of Israel had sworn at Mizpah, No one of us shall give his daughter in marriage to Benjamin. And the people came to Bethel and sat there till evening before God. And they lifted up their voices and wept bitterly. And they said, O Yahweh, the God of Israel, why has this happened in Israel, that there should be one tribe lacking in Israel? On the next day, the people rose early and built there an altar and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. And the people of Israel said, Which of the tribes of Israel did not come up in the assembly of Yahweh? For they had taken a great oath concerning him who did not come up to Yahweh at Mizpah, saying, He shall surely be put to death. And the people of Israel had compassion for Benjamin, their brother, and said, One tribe is cut off from Israel this day. What shall we do for the wives of those who are left, since we have sworn by Yahweh that we will not give them any of our daughters for wives? And they said, What is there, or rather, what one is there of the tribes of Israel that did not come up to Yahweh at Mizpah? And behold, no one from the camp of Jabesh Gilead came to the assembly. So, when the people were were mustered, behold, not one of the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead was there. So the congregation sent 12,000 of their bravest men there and commanded them, Go and strike the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead with the edge of the sword, also the women and the little ones. This is what you shall do. Every male and every woman that is lain with a male, you shall devote to destruction. And they found among the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead 400 young virgins who had not known a man by lying with him. And they brought them to the camp at Shiloh, which was in the land of Canaan. Then the whole congregation sent word to the people of Benjamin, who were at the rock of Rimon, and proclaimed peace to them. And Benjamin returned at that time, and they gave them the women who had, rather, the women whom they had saved alive of the women of Jabesh Gilead, but there were not enough for them. And the people had compassion on Benjamin, because Yahweh had made a breach in the tribes of Israel. And the elders of the congregation said, What shall we do for wives for those left, since the women are destroyed out of Benjamin? And they said, There must be an inheritance for the survivors of Benjamin, a tribe not blotted out from Israel. Yet we cannot give them wives from our daughters, for the people of Israel had sworn, Cursed be he who gives a wife to Benjamin. So, they said, Behold, there is uh, the yearly feast of Yahweh at Shiloh, which is north of Bethel, on the east of the highway that goes up from Bethel to Shechem, uh, south of Labona. And they commanded the people of Benjamin, saying, Go, and lie in ambush in the vineyards, and watch. If the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance in the dances, then come out of the vineyards, and snatch each man his wife from the daughters of of Shiloh, and go to the land of Benjamin. When their fathers or brothers come to complain to us, we will say to them, Grant them graciously to us, because we did not take each man of, uh, for each man of them of his wife in battle, neither did you give them, else you would now be guilty. And the people of Benjamin did so, and took wives according to, uh, according to, the, to their number from the dancers whom they carried off. Then they went and returned uh, to their inheritances, and rebuilt the towns and lived in them. And the people of Israel departed from there at that time, every man to his tribe and his family. And they went out uh, from there, every man to his inheritance. In those days there was no king in Israel, and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. And thankfully that book is now over. Moving on to Acts 25. Now, three days after Festus had arrived in the province, he went up to to Jerusalem from Caesarea. And the chief priests and the principal men of the Jews laid out their case against Paul, and they they urged him, asking as a favor for Paul that he summon him to Jerusalem, because they were planning uh, planning an ambush to kill him on the way. Festus replied that Paul was being kept at Caesarea, and that he himself intended to go there shortly. So, said he, Let the men of authority among you go down with me, and if there is anything wrong about the man, let them bring charges against him. After he stayed there not more than eight or ten days, he went down to Caesarea, and the next day he took his seat on the tribunal and ordered Paul to be brought. 
When he arrived, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem stood against him, or stood around him, bringing many and serious charges against him that they could not prove. Paul argued in his defense, Neither against the law of the Jews, nor against the temple, nor against Caesar have I committed any offense. But Festus, wishing to do the Jews a favor, said to Paul, Do you wish to go up to Jerusalem and there be tried on these charges before me? But Paul said, I am standing at Caesar's tribunal, where I ought to be tried. To the Jews I have done no wrong, as you yourself know very well. If then I am a wrongdoer and have committed anything for which I deserve to die, I do not uh, seek to escape death. But if there is nothing to their charges against me, no one can give me up to them. I appeal to Caesar. Then Festus, when he had conferred with his counsel, answered, To Caesar you have appealed, to Caesar you shall go. Now, when some days had passed, Agrippa the king and Bernice arrived at Caesarea and greeted Festus. Hello, Festus. And they stayed there many days. Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a man left prisoner by Felix. And when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews laid out their case against him, asking for a sentence of condemnation, meaning death, against him. I answered them that it was not the custom of the Romans to give up anyone before the accused met the accusers face to face and had opportunity to make his defense concerning the charge laid against him. So, when they came out, or rather, when they came together here, I made no delay, but on the next day I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought. When the accusers stood up, they brought no charge in his case of such evils as I supposed. Rather, they had certain points of dispute with him about their own religion and about a, a certain Jesus who was dead, but whom Paul asserted to be alive. Being a, a loss as to how to investigate these questions, I asked whether he wanted to go to Jerusalem and there be tried regarding them. But when Paul had appealed to be kept in custody, uh, custody for the decision of the emperor, I ordered him to be held until I could send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said to Festus, I would like to hear the man myself. Tomorrow, said he, you will hear him. So on the next day, Agrippa and Bernice came with great pomp and circumstance, uh, and they entered the uh, audience hall with the military tribunes and the prominent men of the city. Then, at the command of Festus, Paul was brought in. And Festus said, King Agrippa, and all who are present with us, you see this man about whom the whole Jewish people petitioned me both in Jerusalem and here, shouting that he ought not to live any longer. But I found that he had done nothing deserving death. As he himself appealed to the emperor, I decided to go ahead and send him, but I have nothing definite to write my lord about him. Therefore, I have brought him before you all, and especially before you, uh, King Agrippa, so that, after we have examined him, Making sure I don't lose any notes. Um, after we have examined him, I may have something to write. For it seems uh, to me unreasonable in sending a prisoner not to indicate the charges against him. And that is all the notes to hear. Moving on to Jeremiah 35. The word that came to Jeremiah from Yahweh in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Go to the house of the Rechabites and speak with them, and bring them to the house of Yahweh, into one of the chambers, then offer them wine to drink. So I took Jazaniah, uh, the son of Jeremiah, son of ha um, Habazaniah, and his brothers, and all his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites. And I brought them to the house of Yahweh, into the chamber of the sons of Hanan, the son of Ig uh, Igdalia, the man of God, which was near the chamber of the officials, above the chamber of Messiah, the son of Shalom, keeper of the threshold. Then I set before the Rechabites pitchers full of wine and cups, and I said to them, Drink wine. But they answered, We will drink no wine. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, You shall not drink wine, neither you nor your sons forever. You shall not build a house, you shall not sow seed, you shall not plant or have a vineyard. But you shall live in tents all your days, that you may live uh, many days in the land where you sojourn. We have obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, and all that he commanded us, to drink no wine all our days, ourselves, our wives, our sons, or our daughters, and not to build houses to dwell in. 
We have no vineyard or field or seed, but we have lived in tents and have obeyed and done all that Jonadab our father commanded us. But when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against the land, we said, Come, let us go to Jerusalem for fear of the army of the Chaldeans and the army of the Syrians. So we are living in Jerusalem. Then the word of Yahweh came to Jeremiah. Thus says Yahweh of hosts, the God of Israel, Go and say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Will you not receive instruction and listen to my words, declares Yahweh? The command that Jonadab, the son of Rechab, gave to his sons to drink no wine has been kept, and they drink none to this day, for they have obeyed their father's command. I have spoken to you persistently, but you have not listened to me. I have sent to you all my servants, the prophets, sending them persistently, saying, Turn now every one of you from his evil way, and amend your deeds, and do not go after other gods to serve them, and then uh, you shall dwell in the land that I gave to you and to your fathers. But you did not incline your ear or listen to me. The sons of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, have kept the command that their father gave them, but this people has not obeyed me. Therefore, thus says Yahweh, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I am bringing upon Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the disaster that I pronounced against them, because I have spoken to them, and they have not listened. I have called to them, and they have not answered. But to the house of the, of the Rechabites, Jeremiah said, Thus says Yahweh of hosts, the God of Israel, because you have obeyed all the command, uh, rather, have, have obeyed the command of Jonadab your father, and kept all his precepts, and done all that he commanded you. Therefore, thus says Yahweh of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab, the son of Rechab, shall never lack a man to stand before me. Concluding today in Psalms 7 through 8. O Yahweh, my God, in you do I take refuge. Save me from all my pursuers and deliver me, lest, like a lion, they tear my soul apart, rending it in pieces, with none to deliver. O Yahweh, my God, if, if I had done this, if there is wrong in my hands, if I have repaid my friend with evil or plundered my enemy without cause, then let the enemy pursue my soul and overtake it and let him trample my life to the ground and lay my glory in the dust. Arise, O Yahweh, in your anger. Lift yourself up against the fury of my enemies. Awake from me. You have appointed a judgment. Let the assembly of the peoples be gathered about you. Over it, return on high. Yahweh judges the peoples. Judge me, O Yahweh, according to my righteousness and according to the integrity that is in me. O let the evil of the wicked come to an end, and may you establish the righteous, you who test the minds and hearts. O righteous God, my shield is with God, who saves the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge and a God who feels indignation every day. If a man does not repent, God will whet his sword. He has bent and readied his bow. He has prepared for him his deadly weapons, making his arrows fiery shafts. Behold, the wicked man conceives evil and is pregnant with mischief. He gives birth to lies. He makes a pit, digging it out, and falls into the hole that he, that he has made. His mischief re returns upon his own head, and on his own skull violence descends. I will give to Yahweh the thanks due to his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of Yahweh, the Most High. Psalm 8 O Yahweh, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth! You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands, and you have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, also the beasts of the field, 
the birds of the heavens and the fish of the seas, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Yahweh, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. That's it for today. That's all the reading and all of the notes. God willing, we'll be back tomorrow. Behold the word of the Lord.